Yeah. Manasseh is known to you, isn't he? Manasseh is a son. He's a friend. And I take him to be a brother. What does that mean? It means that Manasseh, having known me as a procurement specialist, because I was in the first administration of the NPP mm -hmm. during President Kufo's time, you know, called to approach me that, you know, he's also a journalist, you know, up-and-coming journalist. Way back, you're talking way back. Way back, up-and-coming journalist. Uh, uh, we're not in power, I'm talking of opposition mm -hmm. time. You know, up-and-coming journalist, so he's doing, uh, he does, uh, you know, uh, investigations that involves procurement. So would I mind to, you know, share my knowledge and ideas with him? I said, why not? I am, I'm, I'm interested when I see young men wanting to learn, because with all this, uh, uh, you know, wealth of knowledge, the best I can do is to give it out to young men that, that will need my, my help. So that is how I came to know Manasi. So when Manasi needs anything that is procurement related, that he wants to do any narrative or any investigation, he calls me and I ask him to meet me. And we meet and I take him through the processes so he could take them down and go and do his stories. Mm -hmm. And I have on uh, occasions finished my meeting with him and said, Manasi, can you take this? to you know, buy something, maybe food or whatever for yourself or transport. So that is my relationship with Manasseh. And so Manasseh is somebody, Paul, who had unfettered access to me. The only journalist who can pick a phone and call me or send me a message and I'll respond because I took him to be a friend and I thought I was grooming him. So I believe that whatever the situation might be, if at all there was this plan that I am suspecting, Anybody will look at Manasseh or look out for Manasseh that the only person that can penetrate to this man can be nobody but Manasseh. And indeed, that is how Manasseh actually approached me for this particular expose that he wanted to do. He sent me a, a text message, which I have on my phone, and congratulated me. In those days, you could hear my name all over. Mm. I had put a new face to PPA. So he started by saying, sir, I've seen you with the awards and all that, congratulations, and I'm happy with the policies and initiatives that you have brought to positively impact on PPE and the country at large. I want to come and do a documentary so that we can project these initiatives. That is how Manasseh reached out to me. That he wanted to do a documentary to project And he gave me the 14 questionnaire. He sent a questionnaire ahead, yes. which is quite professional. Yes, mm. you know, which I believe was very professional and I was... I had no problem with any of the, the questions. I was ready to speak to them. Only for him, after one and a half hour interview, to end it with questions about TDL. I must tell you that I was taken aback. But First I, of all, where did this interview happen? In my office. He okay, so he came office. to your office. Yes. He came with a crew. He came with a crew. Okay. And I actually hosted him in my boardroom. Okay, so you started the interview. So yes. this is a recorded interview it is a recorded for the purpose interview. of a documentary. A documentary. That is to show the manifestations Showcase of the PPAs. PPA. Okay, so exactly. you were excited about that. Uh, extremely excited. And this is a friend of yours. Extremely excited. So you are saying that if that call didn't come from Manasseh and it came from XYZ at City TV or XYZ at uh, Joy FM or Metro no. TV, you may not have agreed to not do it. Not at all. Not at all. Because in the first place, I try to do my work as a public servant and not to engage the press you know, mm. in all the things that goes on. So when... Okay. So the interview was done with the 14 questions. He kept with the, with the, with the questions that he sent. Yes. Okay. Until when he was about finishing, he chipped in. In fact, somewhere along the line, he chipped in this particular issue that he's doing an investigation. He wants to know whether I'm the owner of uh, TDL, uh, do I have shares? And I started answering in a different mood altogether. But that is history. But after that... I then walked to my office, and then I asked my secretary to call him for me. So we, so we have left the boardroom. Then he came to my office. So he sat in front of me. I said, Manasseh, are you the same Manasseh that we have been relating? Because uh, what you have just done this afternoon is something that I can it's, it's, it's hard to believe. So maybe I'm talking to a twin uh, brother of, of, of the Manasseh, uh, Awuni I know. So Manasseh bent down his head and raised his head and said, Sir, I'm the same Manasseh. And I said, but Manasseh, why would you do such a thing to me? And after bending his head down, he came up and said, Sir, this was beyond my control. He said what? Sir, this was beyond my control. 
and the God I serve knows I am not telling lies. Manasseh went, uh, 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 bent his head down, and when he raised his head, he said, Sir, this is beyond my control, I'm afraid. So I said, oh, okay. What is beyond his control? What he has done. You see, I'm what asking, did he do? I'm asking him, why would you uh, ambush me with something that you could have come to me, even if you want to do that investigation? Uh, Paul, I'm not worried about anybody wanting to conduct investigation about me. Come in your person as I know you, and let's sit down and bring the issues out. Let me give you the... But what question did he ask you? He, he merely asked you... Uh, do you, are you do you, an do owner, you, of do you, are you owner of TDL? What is and what you shares answered do you have? In the affirmative. And I said, yes. Then he asked you what shares do you have? You, you have answered. Then and you then then told him that you had left the shares. You had, you had dropped the shares when you became PPA or something like that. No, that that we didn't go into that uh, okay. serious conversation. Okay. So in the shrug report, you could see that there were about three question and answers. Are you this? Yes. Initially, I was even taken aback. So he said, "How much shares do you have?" I said, oh, "It's fifty." And indeed. I had told my partner that it was going to be a 50-50 share. I have never seen the document before. But he said the documents show that you had more shares. That I had 60%. Yeah. That was the first day I heard about it. So when he said it, I said, what I know when I was... But why did you feel obliged to answer the questions? You see, again, this is an interview that has gone on all the way. Immediately that question came in, then I saw the mischief. Now, the mischief, I was to manage the mischief. Ignoring it... That is the portion he was going to show. That when I went and asked him this, this is what he did.